Three, two, one. Howdy folks, welcome back. We're in studio in New York at the moment. Last weekend I was down in Philly visiting, what, what do you call it? Yeah, the, the city Philly. of... City of brotherly love. What's up, bro? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> punching Steph is a danger. If you don't know already, Steph is a fourth Dan black belt in Taekwondo. So we're doing some kicking shots under the bridge, literally, <laughs> with the new D850. I am working on a full field tested review, but I've been doing some little snippets as I try it out for myself and sharing it with you guys. Now, in tracking her kick, I found it was doing really well, but I didn't feel it was quite up to the standard of the Nikon D5, which I also had there. So I compared them and anecdotally, I felt like I was getting more of them well tracked with the D5 than I did with the D850. Say in a burst of 10 shots, it would stick with her for nine of the 10 with the D5 and a few less with the D850, but it was just anecdotal. So I wanted to actually test it out. So I've gotten in, well, I already own the D850 and the D5. We're going to do some low light tests in studio with her kicking in the pretty much the same outfit she wore under the bridge with the 24 to 70. And I'm actually gonna film through the viewfinder so you can see how it does tracking her. I've set everything the same. They're both on seven frames a second. I've down, you know, put down the frames per second on the D5. Okay, so it's in the marketing material that the D850, like the D500, have the exact same uh, components for autofocus as the D5. So a lot of people assume then, ipso facto, it's exactly the same performance. But think about cars, for example. There's a lot of cars out there like Nissan or Nissan use the same engine in a bunch of different cars, even the same drivetrain, it doesn't mean they all get exactly the same mileage or power. It's about the whole system that they're in. So let's test it out through the viewfinder, indoors with the 24 to 70, outdoors with the 70 to 200, and see how well they actually do tracking with Steph moving around. Okay, three, two, one, go. Three, two, one. This is so good. So we did the exact same test. I replicated all the settings on both cameras to make sure it was really comparable. And then I'm filming it with my Sony through the viewfinder. We did several takes on each one. Here we go. This is with the D850. You can see on the first one, it's tracking with her reasonably well. On the second one, it just didn't stay with her at the beginning and then caught up later. Taking a look at Steph doing this spin kick with the compression on YouTube, it's hard to see if they're really in focus. Take a look at these last three as she lands from the kick. It all looks okay until you zoom in and then you see these first two, the face has actually been missed. With the D5 now, taking a look at that one, we did a couple of takes with it and both times it did really well in staying with her. The overall keep account in low light was higher with the D5. I have no dog in this fight. I pay for all my equipment. I'm not sponsored by Nikon or, you know, this is just what we're finding in the testing. So now let's head outside and do some punching and kicking in the park. So we're gonna have Steph do a run, a kick, a run, a jump kick, and then run straight at the camera doing zigzags and see how this does. <laughs> just like that. But let's not go as wide on the blue. So land the kick by the blue. Okay, three, two, one, go. <laughs> and my buffer couldn't keep up. So this is a test about focus. So let me change it just to JPEG and see if it can keep up. What? You ready? Three, two, one, go. Let's try something a bit more realistic. We'll have her start in good light and just run straight at the camera. So I'm gonna start on a longer focal length. Go this way for me. Okay, three, two, one, go. Taking a look at the D850 shots, look, by industry standards, it's doing really well, but it's not 100% in focus for all of the shots. I would say about 40% of them uh, just slightly missing the focus when she's coming straight at the camera and you can see it more clearly on the crop here. So it needs a really good point to start off to then be able to track it. Okay, D5 test running straight at camera. We've got lock on. 
Okay, when you're ready, straight at camera. Three, two, one, go. Here with the D5, a really impressive result. You can see through the viewfinder as she goes in and out of patches of light and shadow, it just sticks with her. Looking at the files, we're really getting 80 to 90% in perfectly sharp focus. And note, these were all shot at about 150 mil at 1 500th of a second at the same aperture. So it's nothing to do with camera settings. It's just how well the different cameras are keeping with her as she runs at the camera. Okay, so I'm confident I could do a better job than it was doing on the tripod on both cameras. So I'm gonna start the tracking off, hand hold it and see how we do on them. 70 mil on the first test. Okay, when you're ready, just start running. <laughs> okay, D5, me controlling it, almost 100% hit rate, and even as she was coming really close, it seems to have done an amazing job. When you're ready. Yep, three, two, one. Okay, I can confidently and with 100% certainty say, this doesn't track as well as the D5. It's just for sure. It needs really good light to start the tracking, otherwise it really stumbles. And when she's moving from good light to bad light back to good light, this loses her whilst the D5 holds her. That's just what I'm finding in the field. Once you have okay, folks, so I had a chance to look through the images. We're back in studio now. How are you feeling after running around in the park? Am I still sweaty? Uh, you're a little shiny, good? but no, you're good. Okay, all right. A bit, just a little bit. Oh, darn it. <laughs> um, look, I have to say <laughs> from the outset, I, having done the test indoors and outdoors in a more scientific way, a couple of things came out. First of all, I do stand by the statement that the D850 is not focusing as well as the D5 in lower light situations. Every test I've done bears that out. In studio, when we're in four-figure ISOs, the D5 just kept with her from the beginning through every shot until she left the frame, you know, eight times out of 10, nailing it. The D850, however, would often, indoors and outdoors, be locked on as she started moving, missed the first shot or two, then jumped to catch up to her. And then in those low light situations, it just didn't track as fast or stay on her as accurately. Outdoors, when it was in good light for the starting point of the track, they both did fantastically well. Running straight at the camera, they both did phenomenally well. That said, the D5 still got more of them perfectly sharp rather than almost perfectly sharp. Just think about if someone's coming straight at you, in the time that it grabs focus, then flips the mirror up, opens the curtain, takes the shot, they might have moved forward an extra half a centimeter. And if that forward momentum hasn't been taken into account, then it can still be slightly out of focus. This one, she was broadly in focus. This one, more of them, the face was perfectly in, in focus. Now I did shoot it all at 2.8 outdoors to make sure we'd really be able to see that. Don't let that stop you from getting this guy though. It outperforms the D5 in a load of ways. The resolution, the video, and the focus is way better than the D810 was. And if you're coming from just about anything except the D5, you're gonna be blown away by the performance. But having shot with it in a bunch of different real world situations now, I can safely say the focus is great, but it doesn't translate quite as well as it does in the D5. That's my experience with it. If you wanna check out all our footage that we've shot and the sample images and stuff with this guy, check out macranger.com forward slash D850. And stay tuned, in Iceland in a couple of weeks, I will be filming a full three week long field tested review with this guy going through everything in more detail. I just wanted to get this one out to you soon. So thank you again for being a crazy person in the park. Yeah, of course, of course, anytime. <laughs> there you go, her contacts are below guys if you need a crazy person in the park. <laughs> <laughs> There was a bit of that. All right, thanks guys. If you've enjoyed this, please do throw us a like and subscribe. Loads of photography content coming soon. We'll see you later. Bye.